Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's review time again. Yes, I said that right, it's review time again. And today I'm going to review the Sensepeak 6019 Probe Kit, which was kindly supplied by Telonic here in the UK. Links down below. And what this is, this is a system to help you probe your PCBs on your workbench hands-free with accuracy and reliability be that scopes, multimeters, logic analyzers etc. Now this is the 6019 kit um, and Sensepeak actually do a variety of different kits. This is a 6019 kit which comes with two 200 megahertz SQ200 oscilloscope probes and also four SQ10 multimeter probes. Let's take a look. So here we go. All right, that's one of the oscilloscope probes. And there's the other one. And this is the four, wow, that's a hefty little bag. And this is four SQ10 probes with the test wires connected. We'll have a look at that. So to probe your PCB hands-free relies on two things. Probing the PCB accurately and reliably, but also holding the PCB in place whilst you do so. And that's why this kit comes with a base plate and a number of magnetic holders. Let's take a look. So here are two of the magnetic holders. Ah oh, yeah, they're definitely magnetic, all right. You slide this down and your PCB will just go into that little slot there and that's actually quite heavily spring loaded that so you're not going to lose your PCB anytime soon so I've got four of them and here is the base plate it comes with a mirror surface so you've got to peel off this film first and an insulation layer here which you can put over the top there and a microfiber cloth for polishing that mirror surface and what you also get is a number of insulators here. Uh, if you think about it, if you clip this into the edge of your PCB here, you might short out the you know tracks that run right round the edge of the board. So they actually supply you with a number of insulators that are slotted at one end that you can just uh, insert top and bottom. So you've got enough there to go round all four of the actual uh, holders. So let me put it together, let me get my PCB mounted on the base plate and let's hook up the probes and see how easy it is to use. Well I have to say putting the insulating washers on was a little bit of a struggle. The tension on that spring's actually quite high. It's good in a way but it was a bit of a trouble to get the washers fitted. As you can see you put two in there, one of them sticks to one side, the top side and the other one sticks to the bottom side. So I've done all four, so let's mount the board. So this is just an old modem board that I've got, which hopefully when I power it up, should give some nice signals that I can probe. And as you can see, it's dead easy to apply the actual standoffs. Just push it down, slide it into place and release it upwards again. So I'll put one at each corner. And that's that board really securely in place. No problem at all. And I've got a couple of uh, spare adhesive rings for the mounts in case I need them. Now I have to say, without even buying the probes and just having the base plate and the four mounts, that's a really secure way of holding a board in place. I like it. And here's one of the scope probes, which I'm going to use for my testing. Well, let's see what we've got. So here's the actual probe itself. Looks like we've got a protective cover on the business end. Yep, wow. That is a very sharp and very small thin probe there. You're going to get the majority of surface mount uh, uh, pads with that there and it's spring loaded. So it looks like the idea here is, let me just unwind this probe, that you slot this down through there and 
you clip using these plastic or using these rubber clips here you keep the coax for the probe attached to the actual magnetic mount here so let me just put a couple of them on very easy to fit and that's it so what you've got here is a magnetic mount here and a flexible arm and it's got some level of rigidity to it uh, coupled with the probe coax that comes off of it there's a little bit of weight there and actually it's enough weight that it's actually resting on my hand there and the little spring loaded end is going in about halfway so it's it's the whole system's weighted just perfectly so that you've got a certain amount of weight at the end pressing down onto the circuit board not enough it might move around too much it might move around so I think the idea here is that they've weighted it just right so let me zoom in and let's try bringing it down onto the PCB so we've got a comms chip right in the middle there a Realtek and it's got quite a fine pitch to it an RTL 8201 CP and if I just go down onto one of the uh, surface mount resistors I think they're 0603s that's perfect look at that wow it's so sharp it's just digging in very very slightly into the solder and it's actually providing it some stability I mean I can ease I can even move that around there and it's not skating across the PCB like you'd expect it's so sharp and so small it just goes straight into the solder uh, by the smallest of amounts and it's able to keep its place now let's try one of the pins on the actual chip that is unbelievable that's pretty good that I'd have full confidence in that uh, using that on a live PCB now what you also get with each probe kit is a spare pin for the end of the probe and what you also get is a method of connecting a ground connection to the probe uh, via a supplied crocodile clip with a small plug at the end here and the idea is you attach this little adapter here let me just push that in there we go and then connect that to the probe there we go put that back on the circuit board and then there's my ground connection there but if you don't want to use the crocodile clip you can use this little uh, grabber here go on the uh, ground pin of an IC something like that or if you want you can use the ground connection at the end of the probe here like a normal scope probe and attach this little clip there and you actually got a spring loaded one as well which obviously goes up onto the air like that I think for my demonstration I'll just use the crocodile clip what I've noticed as my uh, scope boots up I'm still probing the board there still onto one of the pins of that fine pitch IC but I haven't yet plugged in the scope but I'm moving the lead around here and it's not even budging at this end you would think you might have to watch what you're doing with this cable because you might dislodge the actual uh, pin on the board but it's not the case it's actually quite secure so let me hook up the scope and let's see if we can actually start probing around that board and let's see if we can get some signals I've changed my mind about using the actual crocodile clip I'm actually going to use the straight connection here because I've found a header here with a ground connection on it so I'm just going to use that there it is plugged in so there we go scopes all ready let's power up the PCB and let's probe around and see if I can find some signals well as luck would have it that board's pretty much dead did anyone notice that I'd actually removed the processor chip from it <laughs> I never noticed but not to worry I've got a few other modem boards that I can try so let me just go away and replace the board 
try another one. And there we go, we've probed this RAM IC successfully as you can see in the scope there and it's such a fine pitch I must say I am impressed with the actual probe tips the way they're able to pierce the solder very very slightly and provide a nice stable connection there and also the actual standoffs themselves are really easy to use once you've fitted the actual insulators there you can grab any side or any corner of the board with confidence that you're not shorting them out and as I said earlier I've got no problem whatsoever in having confidence with the actual tip slipping because I can actually move the lead around no problem whatsoever and it doesn't jump well that's the scope probe but let's take a look at the SQ10 probes so I've got the bag open here let me just pull out the contents and first of all you've got four probes here with a little connection on the end there and the same uh, pin on the end four of them and looks like you get a, a bunch of replacement tips as well and for your multimeter You've got the four millimeter bananas and the connections on the end as well. So obviously you can plug that straight into the actual probe and go straight to your meter. And these ones here will be used to the likes of your logic analyzer, etc. So let me go and hook up the multimeter one and let's try it out. So it looks like you just take the actual probe and the same as the scope probe, just push it down and there'll be an interference fit there perfect and I'll connect up one of the actual four millimeter bananas down on the PCB and that's just going to go straight to your multimeter etc and I've connected up one of the other arms and I'm actually going to use it for the negative of the multimeter find a ground somewhere on the board there we go and that just can go straight to my multimeter and there's a nice example with three probes on the board no problem whatsoever now one thing I do see missing is they do actually supply a rubber cover for the tip of the actual scope probe which is really really handy I think but they've not supplied uh, similar covers for the end of the multimeter clips I guess that's because what you're expected to do is disconnect it slide it out and put the actual probe somewhere safe it's a lot smaller and lighter it's not going to be subjected to a similar level of abuse on the end there I guess so what do I think of this? Well actually I'm really quite surprised. I've never been a fan of using systems like this in the past. Generally because the probes would tend to move around on the circuit board at the slightest nudge. But these have got such a low centre of gravity, a really good pin on the end and a perfectly balanced arm here in terms of stiffness that it actually works out really really well. And they've even put in additional features like the mirror finish on the actual plate itself is you don't have to use this mat. You can leave the mirror finish visible so that you can see the underside of the board. And of course with the insulators fitted on the actual mounts themselves there's no problem there of any kind of shorting. So I really like this system. So if you're interested in one of these or any of the variants that are available, head over to Tyronic's website. The link's down below. Like I said at the start of the video, there's quite a number of options available on what you can buy. This being the 6019 series with the multiple probes, etc. So if you like this review, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty of repair videos and hopefully more review videos coming. Thanks for watching.